Welcome to Getting Started with Open Roads Designer. This course is an introduction to the new Open Roads Designer software, demonstrating the capabilities within this software. We encourage you, after you complete this course, to move on to some of our other Quick Start courses and other courses which explore each of these topics in much more detail and teach you the finer points of performing these workflows. To get started, let's look at the welcome screen that first appears when you start the software. From here, you've got a variety of tools that can help you out. On the left-hand side, there's some videos that are delivered with the software that introduce different parts, like the interface, terrain, geometry, profiles, cross-sections, things that you're also going to see in this Getting Started Guide. In the center part of the screen here, you have access to Bentley Institute training videos. It's a convenient way to launch them if you happen to be at this welcome screen, but I'm going to show you an even more convenient way from within the software using our new Connect Advisor. On the right-hand side here, you can also see news and announcements, some of the things that have happened recently in the Bentley communities and forums, uh, but all again, those are accessible from within the software from our new Connect Advisor. So you can get to them here from the welcome screen or from right within the software. So let's go ahead and move on in and get started. We'll click the start a work session, which takes us over to the starting page of the software. Now there's a couple important things we do here. Number one, we're going to create and launch files, but before we even get to that, we need to make sure we're selecting a proper workspace and work set. The workspace and work set define for you those standards that are going to provide your operating environment give you the templates that you need, the feature definitions, the levels, the colors, the styles, the weights, the text settings, etc. All those things that make things productive. Now right out of the box we've delivered for you a couple of different standards. The imperial standards and metric standards are set up for you to use in a production environment. If we pick one of these, such as metric standards, we can say create a work set, and a work set is going to be equivalent to a project. So you could say create a project, maybe project one, click OK, and you now have an environment set up and ready to go to go build your projects in. You can create additional projects in there just by picking on there, saying create another project or another work set, and you can jump back and forth between those very easily. So again, the imperial and metric standards are set up for you to use in a production environment in your chosen set of units. We've also provided a training and examples workspace. And within there, we've delivered four work sets for you to use. The first two, Imperial Met Training Imperial and Training Metric, are used for our training classes, depending on which set of units you want to work. The other two are example files, GIS or Geotechnical which are our GENT example files, and Integrated Highway Lifecycle, which is a demonstration project that we're going to be working with today. So we're going to go ahead and pick that work set. From here, we can browse to open a file, or we can click Create New File, which is what we're going to do. In this first exercise, we're going to create a new three-dimensional file, and we're going to import our terrain into that file. So we'll select New File, browse to the folder where we want to place this, and select our seed file. Now our default seed file has already been selected for us based on the integrated highway lifecycle work set that we selected, but the default seed file is two-dimensional. That's appropriate because the vast majority of the time you're going to work in a two-dimensional environment in Open Roads Designer. A couple of exceptions to that, one of which is terrain. Terrain we need a 3D file, so we're going to browse and select our 3D seed file, pick open, and give it the name of the terrain file we want to create. I'm just going to call mine Terrain 3D. And we'll open up that file. Now once this file opens, we'll spend a little bit of time here and introduce you to the workspace or the interface that exists in the new product and the ribbon interface that we've provided. Get you familiar with that and then we'll import the terrain into this file. So once you get into the software, you're provided a ribbon interface here, and it all begins by selecting a workspace up here in the upper left corner. Different workspaces contain different ribbon menus and icons on there for those tasks that you're going to complete in those typical workflows. For example, open roads modeling or drawing production, geotechnical, 
reality modeling, just some drafting or drawing, or subsurface utilities. Today, we're going to be working within the Open Roads modeling workflow. So we'll select that, and then we'll see our ribbon options. We've got a home ribbon menu, terrain tab, geometry, corridors, etc. And each of those has different tools available on it. Now, understandably, it can be a little bit difficult to find your way around when you're brand new to an interface like this. So we also provide a, a search tool up here in the upper right corner where you can come in here and you can search this ribbon for commands you may be looking for. So if we type in the name of a command or what we think might be the name of a command, like create template, what it'll do, it'll show us what it finds that matches that or it believes matches what you're looking for. In this case, we've got two items that look like they match, create geometry by template or create template. If we wanted to launch one of these tools, I can just hover over it like I am now, click, and it would launch that tool. I can also slide down just a little bit and hover over one of these sub-menus, and it underlines it when I do. And that shows me the ribbon menus that that tool appears on. So the Create Template tool actually appears on two different ribbon menus for different uses here. And if I pick one of these, it will jump me to that particular menu. So a couple different ways that I can search there. Now the last thing I want to show you in the interface before we jump in and start creating our terrain is this Connect Advisor that I mentioned. Up here in the upper right corner, you'll see this little blue icon. If you click on Connect Advisor, it will launch it. And what the Connect Advisor does is it connects you to resources throughout Bentley. Things like on Bentley Communities, the Bentley Learn Server, YouTube. And additional resources are being added all the time, like the help files uh, and the Bentley.com page. Right now, it's going out and it's collecting the most recent information. It takes just a second, and it finds things that have been recently provided. In this case, I've got my settings limited to show me just things that are coming from the Learn server. So I'm seeing a couple courses that are available out there with Open Roads Designer that have recently been posted a quick start on laying out drainage networks, and this getting started guide that we're talking about today. I could type in search up here and I could search for other topics. I could find other items. I could expand what I'm researching out there. I want to see not just what's on the Learn server, but maybe what's also on Bentley Communities. And I can see that data as well. So keep in mind this Connect Advisor is here. It's right there at your fingertips. You can turn it on and off as you desire or as you need. But it's a great way to get help, training, information uh, without having to go out to a lot of other places to look around. Now, let's move into creating our terrain. So we're going to go to the Terrain tab where we'll find all of our different terrain type tools. We can build terrain from a variety of sources. What we're going to do is we're going to import something from an existing file. Open Roads Designer will import terrain from all of the Bentley file formats, from Geopack, MX, and Inroads, as well as many other standard industry standard type formats. In this case, we're going to bring something in from a Geopack 10 file. So we'll select the file we want to import, click Done. It'll show us the options that we have available as we import that. And the one that we're going to be bringing in and defining today is the feature definition. Feature definitions are really an important part of using Open Roads Designer. Everything that you create, you want to associate with a feature definition. That defines parameters about that feature or options related to that feature. In the case of terrain, it may define how it's displayed. Are the contours visible? Are brake lines visible? Are boundary lines visible? Uh, it also defines the colors and levels and styles and weights that it's on. And we'll see this again as we move into geometry and corridors later on. So I'm going to select the existing boundary feature definition and click import. Uh, I picked that one because what I want to see is just the boundary of my terrain data and its existing terrain. We'll fit our view and I can see that terrain data. Now just to follow up a little bit further on this feature definition we're talking about, if I use my element selection tool, pick this element that's displayed, the boundary of my terrain here, I can go in and look at my properties and I could change that feature definition to something else. Maybe I wanted to see its contours, I can see that and I can change it. 
Now, an important thing to remember here is that this data is now stored. This terrain is stored in the DGN file. There is no external file. There's not a TIN or a DTM or something else where the terrain is stored anymore. We've imported it from there. But the terrain itself, this graphic, is the terrain. I can represent that different by changing its feature definition or some of its other parameters. But that is the actual terrain model. That completes exercise number one. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.